swag of a prize fighter. Uh -huh. The antithesis of a firefighter. Arsonist, I'm a fire rider. Damn. Instant flame like a fire lighter. So special with shows, I live out my flows. Can't walk in my shoes, can't purchase my clothes. Ice in my veins, but I never froze. Picture perfect, but I never pose. As a juvenile, I know I bounce back. Uh -huh. Got rated, had a plan to get my ounce back. Right. Use cheese as bait, that's a mouse trap. Let me to the right person to pounce at. Sure. They selling dreams, I'm pulling receipts. Full force, we can't be beat. Got a dirty mouth, but the flow's so neat. Keep your two cents, talk is cheap. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is Anthony Joshua speaking about his level of aggression in a boxing ring. But some it popped off uh, during the end of our segment, when we, the part of the show you don't get to see in, in, with, between G and Ned, and now Ned has on war paint, man. What, what's going on in that mind, Ned? What's going on with you, man? Murder, violence, <laughs> everything. This kid needs help, man. This kid needs help. I don't know. No, it's on you, G. You created this problem. I don't. I don't want no problem, sir. <laughs> I want to end it. No, G. Stop acting like that. Stop acting like that. You know, for the audience, G likes to come on and talk about. Oh, AJ's a great guy. You know, I like AJ. He's a good for boxing. As soon as camera cut, AJ's 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 this. AJ's that. He's gonna get violated. Nah, it's war. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the politicking with G. Nah, it's, it's, I'm, it's over with. So let's go to war, G. If you're not if you're not ready, wave the white flag. Wave, wave it right now. But nah, it's war time. Like, I'm ready to go. Nukes, nuclear weapons, everything's ready for G right now, yo. Let's go. <laughs> you see? Uh, you, know, you see? This, this kind of I hold on, G. You have, you have anything to say to that? God bless. God bless. <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, dive into what Anthony Joshua had to say, and then we'll discuss it. So this is what Anthony Joshua had to say on Sky Sport. You've got to look at what their attributes are. I'm quite tall. I've got a long range. I'm not going to be a bruiser. If you look at my character, um, I'm not like the most aggressive outwardly type of person so I'm not quite confident I'm not like a fighter type of thing I'm more of a boxer there's a thought process a method behind the madness so I've always tried to develop my boxing IQ but over 12 rounds there are times when you have to fight so I want to become a box fighter so I need to improve and that's why that fight with Jermaine Franklin I realized I was in with someone who's a counter puncher which means that you throw two they try and hit you with three so I changed my game plan. I uh, stuck behind my jab, used my attributes, got the win, and I can build on that because there's going to be a day where just being a fighter may not work against a certain opponent. And if that's all I've got, one of us are going to get found out. But the man who has plan A, B, and C in the locker because he can use his jab, he can move around, he knows how to defend, I think he'll have more of a chance on being victorious on a tough night and... Uh, I'm glad I got those rounds in the bank and I can move forward on my quest to becoming a full and well-rounded fighter. Well, Joshua is speaking at the... So that's what Anthony Joshua had to say. I'm going to turn it over to you, G. What's your reaction to Anthony Joshua's comments? And how does that make you feel uh, for, his, for his chances if the fight does happen with Deontay Wilder? All right, I'm going to say this. I I agree with his reasoning, like his argument. However, I think it's complete cap. And the reason why is because <laughs> Franklin and Wilder, two different beasts, you know? Like, now AJ has, ever since, uh, what's his name, Carlos Takam, right? AJ's had, like, issues with smaller fighters, right? So Wilder is a taller fighter. You know what I mean? And so it's like a whole different dynamic than a, a smaller ring, like a guy that's like up close that gives him problems. Like he had issues with Usyk. He had issues with Carlos Tackham. I'm not going to say he had issues really with Franklin, but, you know, like it wasn't the best AJ that we've seen before. Right. So clearly, I think his Achilles heel is like the smaller fighters. But Wilder's not a smaller guy, you know? And not to mention, Wilder punches way harder than Franklin. So I understand he's saying, you know, uh, having this experience of becoming a boxer, puncher, 
you know, will, will help his career out. True. However, he I don't think at any time during that Franklin fight, he experienced like pain and struggle. You know, he's definitely going to experience pain and struggle when he fights Wilder. So I kind of feel like his argument is almost like him trying to justify his performance against Franklin as opposed to really like trying to uh, use it, his, his performance as experience and preparation for Wilder. So it sounded cute, but I have to be honest, I'm calling Cap. All right, TBE. Eh, no, I, I, I only thing I disagree with AJ is you like you're a boxer and you're trying to be a fighter boxer. No, AJ, you started in this fight, uh, you started your career being a fighter, then you want to be a boxer. And I agree, you have to be a boxer fighter. But you, 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 when you get into a fight, you can't just fight, you gotta learn when you gotta fight back. And that's what that's my problem with AJ right now. But I, I AJ, I see you work on yourself as a man who who who, who takes construct, constructive um constructive criticism and everything like that and that, things of that nature. Sorry for the piece. Sorry for the piece. <laughs> sorry for the speech impediment. You know things of that nature. Whereas you don't say that much, they don't come fluently to the tongue. So AJ. You're not a you're you're you 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 started off. Pause. <laughs> what, yeah, <come> on, yeah. <laughs> Think you about what you just pause. said. It deserved a pause, but go ahead. All right, next one I'm about to say is gonna deserve a pause too. AJ, you ran through guys. Pause. You in, early in your career. You was <laughs> <laughs> Tahada. TBE Tahada. TBE Tahada. You was knocking them out left and right. You know they couldn't stop you. And then after TBE you stands for Tahada boxing experience. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. AJ, after you um got dropped by Ruiz, you changed. And I feel like Kaden always says this: styles makes fights, and you have to understand the style you're up against and the style you're going up against is a dangerous style. You can't just box this style. You have to fight back. And this is where your IQ has to go up another 10 points from Wilder because Wilder, you know, I ain't going to downplay Wilder. But, you know, we done seen him um, nail 10-inch. What do you say? 10-inch nails or something, something, something that it makes sense. But, you know, it's, it's Wilder. According to G, it's Wilder. But... <laughs> Hey, relax. You're all actually, I man, you good. Go ahead. Go I know. Ahead. All I, no, it's just funny. AJ, all I ask is that you prepare yourself for war. That's why I got this makeup. That's why I, uh, you see how ridiculous yeah, I look. Like, oh, boss. Exactly. Boss, boss, yo, boss. Yo, that's why you got makeup on. You know what I'm saying? I got this makeup on, cuz. Oh, it's like one thing in the cup. That's why I got this lipstick on. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yeah. One thing you got this makeup? No, nah, nah, this is why I got this war paint on, cuz G was bothering you. You could have said war paint. AJ. You said makeup, though. You know what I mean? AJ. In other if words, you're trying to look good. Well, you want to prove one <laughs> wrong? Is this guy. Right there, that guy right there. You see that guy right there. You want to prove him wrong? Cause he's not your biggest fan. He don't like you. And I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm like, you know, it's, 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 it's. Before I was the TBE, I was the TTG. Train to go. And you know, let's get, yeah, let's pack G up, AJ. Like, cause no, G, I don't like this, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what you kind of suspect. So yeah, yeah, come on, come on. I'm come gonna on. give a preemptive pause. You know what I mean? Go ahead. All right. But yeah, AJ, you just got for this fight. I feel I feel you, your aggression. You, you they people got questions here about your aggression. You don't have to come out aggressive, but you gotta show you got the dog in you. That's all I ask. Show you got it in you and show somebody steps. And I feel this fight right here, when it's announced, when they start, when they're in the same room. And Wada opens his mouth with the the to to violate, to disrespect, to talk down on him, and AJ be like, "I offered you contracts. I was real. I was willing to make this fight. I was willing to go go um to fight you for your belt, and you 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 dodged me. AJ, you gotta remember these things. Don't let don't have amnesia when it comes to these facts. You you open your arms to this man. This man 
ran away and now he thinks he got the he can speak in the same breath to disrespect you. Don't don't let him get away with that. Don't let him get away with that. Just remember, you held the crown once and you'll hold it again, my boy. God bless. <laughs> Yo, I'll be honest. And it should be no secret that I like AJ. So if not, when I say I like AJ, I really do like AJ. But hearing that to me is just sounded like a bunch of BS. Thank you. Like, bro, what you mean you don't be aggressive and you, the guy who has the most tools in his bag and, um, you know, then he said that he's trying to become a, bo a, bo a boxer fighter. Yo, what are you talking about? What good is it having all the tools if you don't know how to use them? What good is it? See, AJ, you, you are a guy with a lot of tools, but you need someone to tell you what tool to pull out and what tool to use at a certain time. What I have tools. I'm not no expert plumber. I'm not no expert carpenter. I'm not no expert. I have the tools. What makes the person the expert is they know what to do with the tools. Anyone can have the tools. Anyone can have the tools. What makes you an expert is knowing what to do with the tools. So he says, oh, I think having all the tools, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah, if not, I use them. Wilder got one tool he used that month. He know how to use it. He done mastered using it. I say this on the show all the time. Bruce Lee said, I fear not the man who practices 10,000 kicks one time. I fear the man who practices one kick 10,000 times. Facts. Because that man mastered that kick. What next? Now, I remember I, I, I was, this was like a long time ago. It's like five, six years ago. I was asking Caden a question. I was like, yo, I want to be the jack of all trades. He said to me, you can be the jack of all trades or master of none. And that, this is, it's sinking in. It's, you good know what? Point. That's the first time you didn't mess that yes. up, Ned. Yes. Good point, Ned. Exactly. Oh, let me clap like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're right, Ned. Exactly. At what point do you have an identity? AJ just explained why he has an identity crisis. Because he wants to have so many tools, he doesn't know when to use them. And that can be a real problem. I'm going to give you an example. Growing up, I had two pairs of sneakers. There was no question what pairs of sneakers I was going to wear and what kind of outfits I was going to wear. Now I have so many sneakers. I got to go somewhere. It becomes a problem to pick which sneakers I'm going to wear. Oh, I'm going to wear this one. Oh, I'm going to wear this one. Oh, I'm going to wear that one. I start wasting time trying to figure out what pair of sneakers I'm going to wear. In reality, I could just go and grab a box to get the job done, but I'm creating a problem that doesn't need to exist because I have so many options. Mm -hmm. See, and that's how you can lose to someone like a Deontay Wilder. Because Wilder knows where his bread is buttered. Wilder's not playing around trying to get cute, fancy. Wilder's trying to knock you out with a right hand. He knows that. I know that. Everybody knows that. And it's his job to execute. You start going in there, oh, I want to be a boxer puncher. You start trying to do too much. What if you could win just doing what Wilder does? What if you can win just going in there trying to knock someone out? What if that's what you do? Well, is there a problem? Why do you have to try to do all these things? And that's where my issue with Anthony Joshua comes in. Because, Ned, you said prove G wrong. Why does he got to prove G wrong? Why does he have to prove anyone wrong? Go in the ring, do what you do, and live with the result. That's it. You don't got to prove nobody wrong. Who cares what anyone thinks? Who cares what anyone thinks? I'm going to give you some examples, bro. Because I'm saying, like, I understand that doing this in front of millions of people can damage your psyche. And you don't got to do it in front of millions of people for it to damage your psyche. I've done things in front of just regular people at the gym. And it could have damaged my psyche. 
in in many ways sometimes that it did and i had i had to come to the realization so plyometrics box jumps i'm about to say my real numbers they're going to be haters out there it is what it is it don't really matter to me so i'll do box jumps and normally i'll do 48 inches i'll stop at 48 inches but one day i said okay let me try 50 because i was feeling good 48 felt easy jumping 48 inches felt easy so I was like, all right, let me try 50, right? I jumped, tried to get my feet on, missed, I fell. People around start laughing. This is a serious thing because it's like, oh, embarrassment. I fell. I fell trying to accomplish something most people in the gym wouldn't even attempt. Mm -hmm. Something most people in the gym weren't even capable of attempting. Then you factor in my, my size, you factor in my weight, you factor in all this stuff. It's like what I'm doing is impressive. The people around me who have the audacity to laugh doing basic stuff that anyone can do. Why would I care? So I get back up. I do some more jumps at you know 45, whatever, and I'll attempt 50 again because I'm not going to let them haters deter me. Another time. Incline. So I, in, I I did bench press first. I go to the incline. I got 275 on the incline. Felt super light. I go up to 285. Felt super light. So I put on 300 on the incline. I take it off. I go halfway up. It comes down on my chest. I know I can't get it up. So I just bring it down to my thighs. I stand up, put it on the floor. Some people around are laughing, but they can't even bench press 300 pounds. I'm trying to incline it. You understand what I'm saying to you, bro? Like you got to put it in perspective. Like everyone laughing at you. Some of it is people just glad to see you fail because they feel insecure in themselves or they can't accomplish what you're accomplishing. In your mind, it shouldn't matter. And I'm gonna be real with you. I, when 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 you saw what Wilder wrote um, four days ago, that was him letting it go in his mind. What's gonna be is gonna be. What God plans is God's plan. I'm just gonna do the best I can and go in there and live with it. I think AJ's too much of a of a crowd pleaser. He wants to try to do this. He wants people to be like, oh, you see AJ with the perfectly. Forget all that. Sometimes it ain't got to be perfectly timed. Sometimes you just got to, you know, overpower someone. Sometimes you just got to do. But hearing him talk, it just, he doesn't, I, and I, I like AJ, but he doesn't understand how crazy what he said sound. Because he said, I was in there with a counter puncher. And so, you know, I had to change what I was doing. But, yeah, there are times where I need to be more aggressive. So are you saying you don't have that in your toolbox? Is that what you're saying? You don't have being an aggressive fighter in your toolbox? Because I've seen that aggressive fighter before. The best fighters make adjustments at the right time. Floyd is arguably the best defensive fighter that ever lived. And when Shane Mosley rocked Floyd, the first thing he did was walk right to the center of the ring and say, it's on. Forget defense. Forget all that. He knew what it was. I got to let Shane Mosley know you can't beat me. You had that round against Usyk, the ninth round, the tenth round. Usyk said, forget defense. He walked to the center of the ring and whooped your ass and let you know you can't beat me. Well, you probably could have, maybe. I don't think I don't know if you could have. I'm gonna be honest. If you could have, you would have. But you could have fought him back. You wanted no parts of that. And that's where the IQ comes in. The, you lost that fight in that 10th round. I promise you that. It was a close fight, it was everything. But when Usyk was willing to throw him on the table, you wasn't ready to throw him on the table. And this is where a guy like G gets confident. Because I'm willing to bet money on this. Wilder would have threw it on the table. May not have won, but he would have threw it on the table. I watched him do it against Tyson Fury. And that's where you have the issue, AJ. It got nothing to do with two bags. It got nothing to do with all this. 
it got something to do with this. When that tool requires you to possibly get knocked out, you don't want to use it. That's what it is. And everybody knows the tool that you don't know how to use. And so everybody tries to bring it to you that way. So in closing, man, his 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 talks about all that just doesn't make any sense to me. And I like AJ. At the end of the day, bro, it's up here. Get in the ring and do what you do. If someone's a counterpuncher, adjust. If someone is, you know, getting the better of you, swish it up. Try to try to try to step on the gas and see if you win. Sometimes you're not going to win. Sometimes it just is what it is. And sometimes you just got to go for it. But at the end of the day, man, like all this philosophical and I'm trying to I'm trying to be this. Yo, stop. Just tell people, yo, I go in there and do what I do. And I try to get the job done. And and if I can't, then, then that's it. It just wasn't my night. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to please anyone. And everybody laughing and everybody hating on you. Uh, if you get knocked out by Wilder, tell everybody who laughed at you to go try to beat Wilder. And I guarantee if, if they wouldn't even get sanctioned. But if it did get sanctioned, I guarantee they go out the same way. Who cares? I mean, most of them. Unless they're Tyson Fury or something. But how many people are Tyson Fury? So, anyway, uh, that's all I got to say. Anybody got anything else to add? No, nah, other than uh, your net, man. I noticed when Katie was talking, your makeup was like smearing. You know I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Who- <laughs> yeah. Yo, G, it's war. It's war. How's it war with makeup on? You know what I'm saying? Just- <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you for uh, rocking with us. Please like, share, and subscribe. Remember, you can listen to our podcast on all major streaming services. Please join us in the next segment where we talk about Frank Warren saying that Fury is not officially fighting Andy uh, Andy Ruiz next, despite the reports. We are the Boxing Bros.